Kashama Sawant is uh, an elected official. She's a socialist. I believe she's in Seattle. She was elected in Seattle. Um, probably, I think it's fair to say, one of the furthest left, if not the furthest left elected official in the country. She's a really fascinating character. Really, really interesting. She went on the Bad Faith podcast um, with Virgil and Bree, friends of the show, um, and they were talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the strategy that they've employed, the strategy that's been employed by the uh, furthest left Congress people in D.C. So let's see what she has to say and then we'll respond. Remember what they were saying when we were arguing that when a section of the left was saying, yes, absolutely, there is an opportunity in, instead of just voting for Pelosi as speaker, actually the squad should withhold the vote and use it as a moment to build real pressure for Medicare for all. But what we said, and at least what socialist alternatives said was that it's not just as a, uh, as some sort of, uh, drama, or a sort of meaningless political theater, but to actually do the, use the force to vote tactic in the context of helping to build mass rallies and conferences around Medicare for all. But at that time, uh, AOC and also sections of DSA, you know, they said that, well, uh, this is not the moment to use your political capital. And in fact, uh, I remember AOC in her response to force the vote. And I think she genuinely meant this. She said, you know, uh, uh, instead of this, we should uh, fight for something winnable, which is $15 an hour. Well, here we are talking about $15 <laughs> an hour. And again, Biden, Harris, Schumer, Pelosi, all the stalwarts, big business stalwarts of the party are throwing excuse after excuse. It's the parliamentarian, it's the rules, it's the decorum, it's Joe Manchin. So I think what we have to point to is the, is the, uh, is, the, is sort of the, um, endless logic of making excuses for the democratic establishment. So today it's this excuse, tomorrow it's another excuse. Yesterday it was Medicare for all, today it's $15 an hour. This is a failed strategy. I think that's what we need to point out. It's not so much about whether AOC is genuine or not. It, the question is, is the strategy of not will, being willing to go into open combat against the establishment, is that working or not? And it's clearly not working. She gets it. She gets it. That's the exact criticism that I've been attempting to make for an extended period of time here, but haven't been able to do it in such a succinct way. The question is not about whether or not Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is genuine, or Pramila Jayapal, or Mark Pocan, or Mondaire Jones, or Jamal Bowman, or Ilhan Omar, or Rashida Tlaib, or Ro Khanna. You go down the list. The question is not whether or not they're genuine. The question isn't even whether or not they're corrupt. The question is, is your strategy working? And the answer is no. And Kashama Sawant points out correctly there's only one option left, and the option is to go into open combat against the establishment of both parties. That's the only option that's left. Now, they haven't done that. And I can tell you, as somebody who was a co-founder of Justice Democrats, that was the idea. They needed to get in there and go into open combat against the establishment of both parties. They're not doing that. They go into open combat against the Republicans, but they play patty cakes and try to get along, go along to get along with the Democratic establishment. That didn't work, and that's never going to work. If that was going to work, well, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said it. She was like, Sean Swan points this out. Oh, don't do force the vote over Medicare for all. Do it over something that's, you know, more likely to pass, like $15 minimum wage. We just had the option where you could have done it over $15 minimum wage and you didn't do it. So do you see the game that's being played on these people? The game is they always, oh my God, there's always an excuse. There's always something. Oh, we don't have the numbers. Or, oh, the parliamentarian said we can't do that. And so you're not supposed to follow the logic that the establishment is feeding you on every single issue. No, there are some times where you have to draw a line in the sand and fight. Now, here's the thing, guys. These people are scared. I mean, that's, that's really the reality of the situation. They are scared. They do not want to have 
all of mainstream media rain down holy hell on them and treat them like the enemy and demonize them and vilify them. They don't want that. They don't want the leaders of their own parties to take retribution and revenge against them. They don't want that. But it's the only way you're ever going to win and get anything done. And I got news for you. The media hates you anyway. The leaders of your own party hate you anyway. They despise you. They despise you. So, who cares if they, you know, kick it up a few levels? Who cares? You might care, but I don't care that you care. I really don't give a shit about your feelings. I don't care. You were sent there to do a job. To fight for the American people, to fight for working people, to fight for Medicare for all, and free college, and a living wage, and ending the wars, and a Green New Deal, and the list goes on and on. You know, um, universal daycare, paid time off. You're supposed to be fighting for these things. You're only gonna get them if you fight. So, you know, listen. They're pathetic. They're pathetic. They're pathetic. And I don't want to hear, like, I just saw Pramila Jayapal in an interview singing the praises of this COVID relief bill. You're supposed to be the left flank of the Democratic Party. What you should be talking about is the failure of not getting the $15 minimum wage in there and the $1,400 checks not being $2,000 checks. These aren't small things. These are big things. Think about how many people's lives were ruined because there wasn't a $15 minimum wage in there. Over a million people. More than a million people. Over a million people would have been lifted out of poverty, official poverty, with the $15 minimum wage, and something like 27 million people would have been helped. And we're just going to sing the praises of this bill when they promised $15 minimum wage and they didn't put it in there? Guys, what had to happen is those 23 or 24 Democrats who signed Ro Khanna's letter telling Kamala Harris and Joe Biden to overrule the parliamentarian, they should have voted as a block and said... We're going to vote no unless and until you put the $15 minimum wage in this bill. There are more of us who are saying we're not voting for it if it's not in there than people who are saying they're not going to vote for it if it is in there. So get to work, Joe. Get to work, Kamala. Give these people whatever they need to get on board for the $15 minimum wage. That was the only way we were going to get it. And yes, it would have been tough because the media would have smeared the progressives and Democratic leadership would have taken revenge against them, but that's when you keep using the bully pulpit. Why are you guys afraid to make arguments? To debate leadership, who's wildly unpopular, by the way. What's Pelosi's approval rating? 28%? And you're afraid to argue openly with her? You're afraid to take on the media when the media is historically disliked at this point. Historically. They could try to change the conversation all they want. You're a congressperson. You have power. You have the bully public. You can go out there and give a speech. Say, here's why we're not budging on this. Joe Biden promised this to the American people. Kamala Harris promised this to the American people. A poll in 2019 showed minimum wage increase to $15 an hour is a 67% issue. 67%. Here's how many people it would help. Here's the minimum wage should be, if it kept up with productivity, over $20 an hour. And people are going to fight with us about 15 You don't even want to put 15 in there? fuck out of here. Fight! 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 And if you're not gonna do it, then don't whine when people attack you. Don't get upset when people come after you, because they have every right to come after you if you're not doing the thing that we sent you there to do. So people have been more than patient, man. They've been more than patient. And the left doesn't have much to show for their tactics of well, every now and then I will work with Pelosi and I'll say nice things and then maybe she'll give me some things if I say nice things to her and then from now on maybe we'll have an open working relationship and then when I ask for the next progressive thing maybe she'll put it in there. It hasn't worked. It's never going to work. Make them hate you. And by the way, they think the media shitting on them and Democratic leadership shitting on them will ruin their future prospects. You'll become more popular if you do it. I promise you you'll become more popular. But you have to take on the fight and never back down and never shut up and never stop speaking your mind about what you believe in. So I think Kashama Sawant is exactly right about this. She clearly completely gets, um, you know, the strategy that we were attempting to do. Um, and she's probably the answer. She's the one who needs to be in Congress or she's the one who needs to be in the Senate because she ain't going to back down. 
She's going to lead the fight. And you, you know what happens, guys? Usually all it takes is one. All it takes is one person to show a little bit of fucking spine. And then the rest of them hop on board. But, you know, listen, it is sad. Because what does it show you? It shows you that these people who we sent there, who we hoped were leaders, none of them are leaders. They're all followers. They are. I'm sorry. As much as I like some of them, they're all followers. They're waiting for somebody else to take the risk. And then when they take the risk and they see, like, oh, this guy didn't fall when they s suddenly start advocating for that position. Oh, me too, me too, me too. You know when this happened recently? The, um... And this isn't even one that I necessarily agree with, but it's one where they decided, oh, we're going to puff our chest out and fight. When the, it came to expelling Republican Congress people or senators who fed into the stop the steal nonsense and, um, you know, kind of egged on the insurrection, you had one, I think it was Cori Bush was the first one to come out and say every Republican congressperson who egged on this insurrection and fed into the conspiracy theories, every one of them needs to resign and needs to be expelled. That's what needs to happen. And one of them came out and said that. I think it was Cory Bush was the first one. And then all the others came out and said, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, totally expelled them. So bad, terrible. Here, here's my statement on it. Here's my interview on it. Here, I'm going to go over here and talk about it. I'm going to go over there and talk about it. But notice, an issue like that, it's a little easier. Why? Because your own, the Democratic Party leadership is not against you when you do that. So you feel like mommy and daddy aren't going to get mad at you, so you feel like you have free reign to go and, you know, be as vituperative and angry and loud as you want to be. You need to feel the right and the ability to be vituperative and angry and unapologetic on issues that piss off Democratic leadership. And if you're not, then you're not doing your job. Because they're not representing the people. They're representing corporations and their donors. They're not your friend. They're status quo defenders and, and tweakers at best. So, just takes one of them to show some spine. I and mean, if Kashama Sawant was there and she was the one doing it, I think people would try to jump in front of that parade. Which is what politicians do, you know? A lot of them are followers. They're not leaders. Nobody wants to take a risk. They see one person take the risk and it kind of pays off. And they're like, me too, me too. Yeah, no, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm totally in We saw that happen with gay marriage, right? There was a time when every Democratic politician was against it. Then a few came out for it and everybody was like, no, no me too. I love the gay community, even though I was just against gay marriage seven and a half minutes ago. I've, I've always loved the gay community. I'm in favor of the gay marriage. So, unfortunately, we got a bunch of weak, petty, insecure losers... But the good news is, all it takes is one person with spine and backbone to be the leader to show the way, and then a lot of them follow along. So I'm just happy that there's some elected official somewhere in the country who really understands where we're at.